Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with the last topic. The last topic on the Clipper circuits. So we've seen the basics, not the basics. We've seen it in a greater detail. I hope you've got the idea, you've got the concepts. You, you apply the same uh, uh, the same things, you know, this is the same as rectifier circuits. So first when you study rectifier, so for many people it's confusing right, when they study it. And then after you see the clippers, so once again just you refer to the clipper, uh, to the rectifier circuits. In the negative half cycle most people confuse it to when to change the polarity, if change the polarity or not. Or then take the negative of the input or positive of the input. So I believe we, I have, uh, I have cleared my point over there. In the rectifier circuits as well but then when you study the clippers in a detail you get the rectifiers in a much more detail and especially when you see some examples as we saw in the previous videos we, we saw a plus to minus 10 volts we saw negative to positive 10 volts I told you when to change the polarity how to change the polarity or how to change the inputs so when you get it you get the rectifiers much more easily right today we see the last topic on the clipper circuits and that would be the combination clipper circuits or you could say a two level clipper or a multi level clipper circuits what's the meaning of this so we'll understand it as we go on in the video the, the headings could be multiple let's say I, I i give it a heading of a two level clipper two level clipper or let it be what a, a multi-level clipper you could say right or it could be let's say a combinational clipper circuit combinational clipper circuit now what does this mean what does this mean so the two level clipper means what so till now that we've discussed all of the videos we've seen a single level clipper and that means what that it was only clipping at a single level either above a particular reference level or below a particular reference level so that was a single level clipper in the two level clipper you could see you would see in this particular case that it would clip above a particular level as well as well as it would clip a below a certain level so that would be a two level clipper which means the positive level would also be clipped the negative so that would be a positive clipper as well as a negative clipper so that is why it's called a combination clipper and as it has clipped more than one level it is called a multi-level clipper right yes so let's get into the circuits let's take a, a circuit diagram for example for instance this is a resistor and then you have a, a diode in this particular fashion and you have a, a biasing source let me take a little tougher one so that the easier ones are more easy for you guys. So this is a, a circuit that is shown and the output is taken across these polarities plus minus output is over here. This is a resistor R plus minus input is applied over here. This is say an ideal diode d1 this is say biasing potential v1 this one is d2 this one is v2 so for analyzing the circuit for analyzing the circuit first you have to make an assumption and the assumption is that one of the voltage source the biasing source is greater than the other one of the voltage source is greater than the other you have a v1 let's say v1 is let's say greater than v2 v1 is let's say greater than v2 now we would apply the open circuits right because the short circuit well we've not seen the open circuit test and the short circuit test basically these are the same things but we've not seen that by name the thing is if you apply short circuit test over here many of you would know if you apply short circuit test over here so two different voltage sources could not act in parallel at the same time right so that is why we would apply the open circuit test or whatever it is just let it go just forget everything about it the thing is just assume that v1 is greater than v2 for instance right yes now what do you have so have a look have a look so we would be uh we would have what 
we would have what let's say let's start the analysis right so we need to have the diode forward bias if the diode is forward bias it would conduct and when would it be forward bias if the p to n voltage is greater than zero the voltage across the diode is greater than zero so if you apply the open circuits you could say that what or just leave the open circuit what is the voltage across this p to n voltage is this sort of a diode right vd1 and similarly in for this direction the p to n voltage would be like this right so for a diode to be forward biased what should be the the case the voltage across it should be greater than zero the reference velocities i've already mentioned p to n voltage right so for vd1 what do we have for vd1 what is vd1 it's v input minus v1 vd1 is v input minus v1 right yes so for to make it forward biased this should be greater than zero or which implies what that the input voltage should be greater than v1 if the input voltage is greater than V1, the, 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 the diode V1 is forward biased. And if it is forward biased, this is a short circuit equivalent. V0 is simply equal to V1. V0 is simply equal to V1. Isn't it? It is. Yes, yes. Similarly, for the for the next, for the for the diode 2. So have a look. It's a V2 minus a v input the the voltage across the diode 2 vd2 is v2 minus of v input it is yes so what would happen now for this this should be greater than zero to make it forward bias and if this is greater than zero this implies what that v2 should be greater than v input v2 is greater than v input or the input voltage is less than v2 so this would imply what now this would be a short circuit so the current would flow through this v naught would be equal to v2 v naught would be equal to v2 is that fine till here it is yes yes now so let us uh, draw it do you want to draw it you can draw it now um, what would happen in between the two what would happen in the in between the two let's say i have assumed that we input is uh, we we one is let's say an eight uh, a five volts for instance it's greater than three volts for instance for this so what would happen in between the two now this is the case when we input is greater than we one that is we input is greater than five and this is the case when we input is less than three so what about four so that is something lies over here that when the input voltage is greater than v2 and it's less than v1 so in that case both the diodes are reverse biased both diodes are reverse biased and you can see it from the circuit so both d1 and d2 are reverse biased and in this particular case if both are reverse biased so v output is simply equal to v input and let us draw the curves let us draw the curves so if this is suppose my time axis this is my input axis this is the curve right yes and my output voltage is over here so let's say I draw the reference levels. This one is V1 is greater than V2, right? So this is let's say V1. And let me drop these points down. And then we have V2. So V2 is less. So let me draw it over here. This is my V2. Let me drop down these points also. And then this is my t by 2 point and this is my t point so have a look what happens in this region what happens is in this region the input voltage is greater than v1 the input voltage is greater than v1 so v output is equal to v1 so in this case that this is the case v output is equal to v1 then below the green or wait a minute yes below the green below the green what is the case v input is less than v1 v input is less than v2 so v output is equal to v2 so below the green is this case 
this is v2 and this one and similarly at this t by 2 point also and for the negative half cycle also fine and yes and in between the two in between the two is what this one so in between the two what happens is that v input is greater than v2 it's less than v1 both are reverse biased output is equal to input so this is the case draw this sinusoid and i made a mistake mm. yes this is not included this is not included so this is your output is that fine it is let's say we, we draw the transfer characteristics for this as well so let's say we draw the transfer characteristics and that would be like this if this is my input voltage this is my output voltage so we have v2 that is less right and then we have v1 that is greater fine yes this is let's suppose v1 so when the input voltage is less than v2 output is v2 when the input voltage is less than v2 output is v2 right yes when the input voltage is greater than v1 output is v1 this is the case and in between the two output is equal to input so that is a straight line of slope equal to 1 isn't it like this it is and i hope that you have understood the circuit let's say we have another simpler circuit a simpler circuit the book has mentioned this the book has mentioned this in the combinational clipper circuits in the page number 88 i told you right so let's say we draw it let's say we draw it we have a we have a source resistance then resistance then you have a, a diode in this way then you have a biasing like this similarly then you have a diode in the opposite manner and you have the biasing in the opposite manner as well and the output is taken across these terminals that is a minus plus output polarity this is a plus minus input polarity this is a resistor r this is a diode d1 this is a source v1 this is a diode d2 this is a source v2 now in this case i took v1 greater than v2 you could also take v1 less than v2 you can play with it right yes now in this case have a look what happens is the you, you have a load resistor of course over here you could say and this R value would be very less than the load resistor. So this is so you could say the voltage drop across this could be negligibly small, right? Anyways, we don't have anything to do with it. So let's analyze the circuits. Let's say for the uh, for the what happens for this? First, have a look for this. So this plus is connected to N side V1 is reverse biasing the diode D1. And similarly, this negative is connected to P side. So this is also reverse biasing D2. So both V1 and V2 are doing what? Are reverse biasing D1 and D2. Isn't it? It is. And the input voltage is forward biasing input voltage is forward biasing d1 and it is reverse biasing d2 isn't it like this it is so have a look d2 has to be reverse biased for both the cases when the input voltage is greater than v1 v1 this means what that d1 is forward biased and d1 is forward by this is short circuit v0 is simply equal to v1 when v input is less than v1 d1 is reverse biased the output voltage is simply equal to v input for both these cases for both these cases d2 is reverse biased you can see this i told about the positive cycle for instance let's say for positive cycle with the red color in this example we see with a different approach right yes now what happens is when the negative cycle arrives so let's say i change the polarities if the negative cycle arrives so have a look v1 and v2 are reverse biasing diode d1 and d2 so this is understood right that let me write it again v1 and v2 are reverse biasing d1 and d2 now have a look have a look v1 is doing v input is also reverse biasing d1 
V input is also reverse biasing D1 minus kinetic to P set, right? And it is forward biasing D2 this time. So what could be the case when V input is, what would be the case in this case? is less than v2 when v input is less than v2 so this would be reverse biased right this would be reverse biased which means this would be an open circuit so we v not would be simply equal to v input yes v not would be equal to v input and if we v, v input is greater than v2 so this means that this would be forward biased, D2 would be forward biased. Yes? So V0 would be equal to V2 and this is wrong. V0 should be equal to minus of V2. So when the input voltage is greater than V2, what would be happen? This would become forward biased. And when this become forward biased, the output voltage would be equal to V2. And you could write a negative V2 as well over here. So let's say we understand it through the graphs. Right? Let's say we understand it through the graphs. So if this is my time axis, this is my input axis. So have a look. Now this is my output axis. This is my time axis. So uh, V1 have a look. V1 is what? It's a positive biasing. You've seen the, uh, the, the basic introduction. So this have a look. This branch is a positive biased. Positive clipper. This is a positive biased positive clipper right yes and similarly this branch you could see this is a negative biased negative clipper so that is why I named it a combinational clipper so this V1 lies somewhere over here and similarly this V2 lies somewhere over here so you could have just have not written this negative point also but anyway this is negative so you understand it. So now what happens let me drop down these points. So in these drop down points what is the case the input voltage is greater than V1. The input voltage is greater than V1 this is the case output is equal to V1. Output is equal to V1 this is the case. Similarly when the input voltage is less than V1 V output is equal to V input. So this is for the positive cycle. This was for the positive cycle. T by 2, right? Now, for the negative cycle, let me drop down these points. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Let me make it a little over here. Right? Yes. So now that would be fine. Okay. So uh, the thing is I got a little confused. I was getting confused in the most confusing point that I, I myself have cleared very much times but I once again got confused into it. So the thing is the thing is that, and that was in the morning and I was also in a little hurry I had to go to attend my class so uh, I could not focus very much right now it's the night time free time so we we could just have a focus right and excuse the light over here somewhere this is from that light so we don't have anything to do over here anyways so when v input is less than v2 the diode is reverse biased and the output is equal to input so the input voltage when it's less than v2 so the output will be equal to v input so have a look this is the case right Yes, and when the out when the input is greater than V2, the output is negative of V2. So which means in the black, let's say we draw it with the black. Well, this one is the case, right? This is a negative of V2. Isn't it like this? It is. Yes. Is it correct? No, it is not correct. It is not correct. 
Why is it not correct? So have a look. I told you when you change the polarities as I have already did for the negative cycle, I have changed the polarities to negative plus. What should I do? Now I take the absolute value of the input. I take the absolute value of the input and the absolute value of V2. So have a look, the absolute value of V input is less than V2. Let's say for instance, for instance, this V2 is 3 volts, right? So the absolute is greater than over here if we have a 2 volts, over here if we have a 5 volts. So now this is less, right? So now you have to talk on the basis of the absolute. So which means this one, this one that we I was getting confused with is wrong basically. So what do you have to do in this case? Have a look. When the absolute value of V input is less than V2, which means this case, absolute value of input, let's say is 2, is less than V2, which is let's suppose 3. So the output is equal to the input. The output is equal to the input in this case. And similarly over here. And when the absolute value of the input is greater than V2, which means for instance this is negative 5, this is negative 3, the absolute 5 is greater than 3, the output is equal to negative V2, which I have mentioned over here, negative V2. And now I believe that this is clear, so I myself got confused over here. And that is why I left it. So I told you when you change the relative polarities in the positive cycle with the red color, the negative cycle with the green color, if you change the polarities, you have to take the absolute value. And if you want to take the negative value over here, let's say you want to mention it as a negative two volts, you don't have to change the polarities then in that case. Right? Yes. So have a look to this one. The clipping has been done above a certain reference level or the positive portion of the waveform is clipped. This is a positive clipper. Over here have a look. You have the negative portion clipped down. You have a, a clipping done below a reference level. This is a negative clipper. So have a look. Is this not a combination of a positive and a negative clipper? Can I not name it as a combinational clipper? Has it not clipped for two reference levels? Can I not level? Can I not name it as a two-level clipper? I can. Can I not name it as a multi-level clipper? I can. More than one, right? Yes. So that is it about this video. The book has mentioned this graph, this circuit. So this is what it is. And that is, I believe, everything we have to understand about the clipper circuits. And I hope that you have understood it very well. Still, if you have any doubts, any confusion, anything regarding the lectures of clippers, you can ask me in the comment section. I'm here for you guys. If you want me to make a separate video or anything else, you can. One thing, you don't have to name it directly. You have to do the analysis, the input, the output, the transfer characteristic. Draw the transfer characteristic for this case by yourself. Draw transfer characteristic for this case by yourself. And then see what happens. So I'm telling you that first do the analysis. Consider the input waveform. Consider the output waveform. Do the analysis and then name the circuit. Okay. Yes. So as this circuit, this is a combination of positive clipper and negative clipper. Positive bias, positive. Negative bias, negative. Right? Yes. Okay, so I was saying that if I have uh, uh, drawn all the transfer characteristics, so why not for the last circuit of clippers, yes? So, so let me have a little space and, and let me tell you, let me tell you one thing that for drawing the transfer characteristics, the voltage across the diode method, that is this method is quite helpful, is very helpful. In this one, if you are considering the positive cycle and the negative cycle, you get confused as I did. So you get confused, yes. What do you have is, you go for this method. The preferable method is this one. That is you calculate the voltage across the diodes. Let's say I do it with this method. The original polarity is shown as this plus minus. Go according to the original polarity. So for the voltage across the diode D1 to be forward biased, what should it be? What is the voltage across the diode? So let us do it quickly. It's V input minus V1. So this should be greater than zero. This implies that the input voltage should be greater than V1. Right, so this would be forward bias, and this implies what that the output would be equal to V1 simply. Right, yes, similarly for the voltage across the diode D2. 
So the voltage across the diode V2 for positive to negative is what? It's a negative V2 minus V input or it is equal to, uh, you could say this, is, this should be greater than zero for it to be forward biased, which implies what? That the input voltage should be less than minus of V2, right? So this implies what? That the output would be minus of V2. So if you do it in this particular fashion, you find that this analysis drawing the output waveform is also easy as well as the transfer characteristics could be drawn directly. So if these are the transfer characteristics, this is my input voltage, this is my output, V1 is a positive value, supposed this is minus of V2, right, as the reference is. So have a look, when the output, when the input is greater than V1, output is equal to V1. When the input is less than minus of V2, output is equal to minus of V2. And in between the two, what would happen in between the two? So in between both the diodes would be reverse biased as in this case and output would be equal to input. So in between both are reverse biased and output is simply equal to input. So this is the transfer characteristics of this curve and I hope that it is clear okay so you don't go for the positive cycle in the negative cycle all right you just go for the for this sort of an analysis you go for the forward bias condition or you could also say the reverse bias condition or the the, the main thing is the voltage across the diode voltage across the diode and then do the analysis so when it's forward bias, just do the, that thing go for the forward bias of each cases so I believe that is all. I finish this video over here. See you in the next one with the new topic of clampers. So till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel and the Facebook page. Goodbye.